Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Kirk Nelson. I'm the executive director of the New Bedford Museum of Glass in New Bedford, Massachusetts, where we had a large glass industry flourishing from the 1870s until 1957. Uh, today is June 21st, 2020. We are about four months into the coronavirus uh, experience, and uh, the museum is reaching out to uh, the public through the internet. This will be the first of several um, internet programs that will feature uh, pieces from the museum collection and information about glass. Now, since June 21st is Father's Day, I thought it would be fun to interview my father, who has uh, influenced my interest in glass, and he is sitting next to me here, Ross Nelson. Hello, and, uh, everybody. Happy Father's Day, and Dad. Happy Father's Day to you. And thank you for the gift of uh, a lifetime interest in glass. It was my dad who got me started uh, as a teenager uh, going to auctions and to uh, flea markets and antique shops and focusing on glass of all types from ancient right up to contemporary. And today uh, we're going to talk a little bit about dad's interest in glass and in particular dad's interest in a Connecticut glass factory that's just about 30 miles from his his town where I um, where I grew up, Manchester, Connecticut. Um, it's a company called the Helmschmied Glass Company and started by a glass decorator and artist who originally came from Bohemia and then worked at the Smith Brothers firm in New Bedford. So again, this comes back to um, our local interest in, in glass at the Glass Museum. Um, so Dad, if you'd like to tell us a little bit about how you learned uh, that this factory once existed in Meriden, Connecticut, not far from your, your hometown. Yeah, well, I think it's, uh, it's been a pleasure on my part to be able to go ahead and speak about glass. I've always said kind of an interesting glass. Uh, we also had the Pitkin Glass Works that's in Manchester, Connecticut. But uh, this Meriden company uh, was in existence for quite a long time. And I'll just show you a few pieces that I've acquired over the years and tell you a little bit about searching for glass. Uh, obviously, as most people know, uh, there are shows and antique markets and uh, quite a few different ways to acquire glass. Uh, when I started, actually, uh, my aunt gave me a piece of Tiffany that was kind of unusual. In fact, it was downright exceptional, uh, which I gave to Kirk, and Kirk has given it to his daughter, and I don't know where it is, well, I know where it is right now, but I'm not sure of ownership. <laughs> At any rate, uh, the Connecticut Glass Company that you see five pieces in front of you in the photograph and uh, two of them uh, these were all designed I believe by Helmschmidt. Uh, there's a mark on the bottom of them I don't know whether you can see it that way but this was kind of his mark the mark says Bellware, B-E-L-L-E-W-A-R-E. -E -E. And they made everything in the way of tableware, of vases, of, I want to say dresser, dresserware and whatnot. Uh, he made two different types. This has little bubbles, this uh, iris, the blue iris vase. That's as big a vase as I know of that he made. He may have made larger ones. That particular one, if you look at the bottom, it was made into a lamp. So they drilled a hole in the bottom of it, brought the wire up uh, through some metal work that the vase set on, and uh, used as a lamp. And from what I understand, 
uh, a lot of his wear that was left when he retired or would get out of business was bought up by uh, a person or persons who used them and made vases out of them. So it was one of the after sales pitches. The, the one I kind of like best is the vase with the woman on it, which was uh, owned by the, uh, the, the fellow who uh, made it and sold at Bourne's, and it was bought by Frank Burton, kind of a province of the thing, and I always admired it. Uh, in his house, he had it high up on a a uh, display case, and I, I just said, Frank, if you ever want to get rid of that, I might be interested in it. Actually, I would be interested in it. <laughs> and uh, years later, uh, he got rid of his glass, and that ended up at Well, it was a negotiation through talking, um, like what would you be willing to pay for it, and would you be willing to pay this and that one. And evidently I uh, ended up with it. But I think it's an exceptional piece it's because of the lady's portrait on the front. Uh, the back is flowers which most of his vases were floral. Um, this is a little vase that's kind of similar to the big one uh, with, the with the flower display, I should hold it next to it. And uh, he made them in all different, or quite a few different sizes. Um, the other pieces, I'm not sure just what this is, but they're they're all all pieces I have here are marked bellware, um, and they're all a little different. Uh, this is a big dresser vase that opens up at the silk. These were lined with silk, and the silk is generally shredding nowadays. Some is still okay, and others have been resilt. But this, again, is of a rose, and there, are, there were quite a few of these made. Um, I think it's, it's interesting to know that uh, designers uh, design some pieces and might have made a hundred of them or you know, so there are really a lot of them around uh, the girl the, the, this one I haven't seen more than this one and I don't know of any others but uh, it's been fun it's been a pleasure having Kirk as a father <laughs> uh, he's really I have two other sons, neither of them have any interest at all in class. So I was able to sustain my collection, uh, which this past year I donated all to the New Bedford Museum of Glass. And we are extremely grateful for you. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> you're, you're <welcome. laughs> it was a, a spectacular gift. You're and welcome, we were son. Just a really. Um, overwhelmed with, and, with, and that, with that. I will still continue to look. <laughs> <laughs> the collector continues. Yes. Well, this is a, this yeah. is a particularly interesting group uh, from Dad's collection uh, because um, Carl V. Helmschmey started his career in New Bedford where our museum is, is located. Um, we are in the process of um, setting up our museum in a new uh, space in New Bedford. Uh, we've been working on this for about a year. We expect to open, um, reopen to the public this summer in the James Arnold Mansion in downtown 
New Bedford, which was the home in the 1870s and 80s of the president of the local glass factory, the Mount Washington Glass Company. And so Helmschmied, the decorator and designer, started his career in New Bedford. Like a lot of, of glass uh, craftsmen, uh, people involved with the glass industry, he moved around a lot. So he went from New Bedford to Meriden, Connecticut. He went from there down to New Jersey to work in the China decorating uh, trade came back to New Bedford, then to Meriden again, uh, moved around a lot. He worked for C.F. Monroe, and uh, Monroe is much better known. Uh, they did the Wavecrest line. Um, and in 18, so he started work for Monroe in 1886. Um, in uh, the early 20th century, he left 1903 to set up his own company, the Carl V. Helmschmied Glass Company, and uh, it was incorporated in 1904. So these works date to the early, um, the early decades of the 20th century, and uh, again, particularly with their New Bedford, um, New Bedford provenance or association, we are thrilled to add them to our collection. So again, thank you, Dad. Um, just to say a few more words about Frank, the late Frank Burton. He was a wonderful dealer who um, did the shows for many years at the Westchester Glass Show, um, one of the premier all-glass antique shows that took place in the country. And so we give a little shout out to the Westchester Glass Club members out there because they've been extremely supportive of our glass museum and we've gotten to know them well over the, over the many decades that that show has been going on. Uh, Frank, again, was a member of the club, was active with the shows, and um, was an extremely warm, um, a nurturing uh, figure in the glass world. He was happy to share his information with people. We learned a lot from him over the years, and um, it was a, a pleasure to get to know him and to end up with a piece that was one that he, one that he prized. Yeah, you know, Kirk, it's interesting to note that a lot of the Meriden glass uh, was made in Mount Washington and shipped to Meriden where it was decorated. Yeah, the great connection. So there's there. still a big question mark on a lot of the dresser pieces. Where were they decorated? Uh, and just but the feeling is that quite a few were decorated in Meriden. Right, where you have individuals like Carl V. Helmschmidt, who was moving back and forth and worked for both places uh, several times over the years. It makes collecting kind of a fun um, research project, a sleuthing project to find out the answers to questions like that. And Meriden had one of the early flint glass operations in the country. So it's surprising sometimes to find out, and some of the, many of the buildings are still there. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, take a ride down and look at old glass. Part of the old glass factory yeah. still standing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, you've taken me down there a few times, and I've always yeah. enjoyed. It's been fun. Enjoyed our little glass excursions. Yeah. Uh, some of them longer and bigger than others. Um, and I can't get away without saying, Manchester, Connecticut, where I live is the Pitkin Glass House, which is one of the earliest glass houses in the country. Goes back to the 18th century, and the ruins of that building still stand. It's quite a romantic uh, yeah. stone uh, uh, structure in, in downtown Manchester, which you can, you can visit and see today. So, Dad, yep. thank you again for, um, um, for being a great father, thank and you. happy Father's Day to you and to all the fathers out there. And we, uh, we plan to continue this series with uh, other um, uh, glass episodes that will feature on the internet and look forward to, uh, uh, to connecting up again. Happy Father's Day to all. All right.